Okay, so um, I've walked around the shoot today here at the Beretta Worlds 2023. Um, I've had a beautiful lunch, I've had time to sit down and relax. And now I'm joined by GMK head honcho Carl Watari. Um, and we're going to have a little conversation today just on a few points about the show and the greater beyond. Hello, sir. Hi there. Thank you for your time. No problem. I've had a brilliant day today, and I think, well, I know the whole team have. Um, Andy and Dino, and uh, there's been some great shooting, some incredible missing, uh, lots of laughs. Um, and actually, uh, uh, I've forgotten her name now, the lovely lady from uh, Ian Coley shot beautifully on some real taxi plays. I think she's been surprised to herself. How long has this, this Ferretta world been running as a, you know, as a shoot? Um, since uh, 1987, I think, was the first year. So it was sort of set up in the beginning 80s when I think back in those days, people, some people would even go and buy their, uh, their first Beretta just mm. to shoot it. And, um, yeah, it was nothing to do with me. And that would have been my favourite gun, the 686S, <laughs> yeah, of the era. Could be, could be, yeah. <laughs> And, and where were those first shows held? Because I think you've had this in you know one or two locations throughout the years. Yeah, I think the first ones were at Apsley um, for a few years, and then it moved to Roundwood Shooting Ground, which used to be run by GMK back in the um, early 90s and so on, and then moved on to West London, and then uh, into the Mion Valley, and. Uh, a couple of places there and so we tend to have it a couple of years in in a location um, and then move it around keep it fresh and I was going to say the idea of changing location is that literally to keep it exciting for the shooter you know sort of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for sort of um, you know layout of ground be it manicured or be it agricultural uh, topography is what I'm looking for that type of thing Exactly. Yeah, it, we we found um, like Mion Springs was the you know the famous one for a long time. Yes. Shot over lots of water and and, and the uh, but you know people if they shoot at a venue for too many times they eventually have a bad round and then uh, you know then they associate that a little bit with the venue and so on. So this way we try and keep keep it moving. So um, and also we can make it easier for certain people who are coming from further away you know so it, you know this one's quite a long way southwest but yeah. um, but it's a beautiful place as you can see so we, we have to take it yeah and who you know who, who's the shoot designed for you know who can enter the shoot what what, what, what what do you think the demographic of the shoot is yeah I mean or rather what is it and, and who is it available to so well it is an open shoot you know but there, it has got that difference that you've got to shoot a Beretta um, to come here so I think it a lot of the Beretta shooters feel it's their shoot, so it, it's not so much of a, you know, we get a lot of BNC class shooters here, which, and we try and set the course accordingly, and, you know, we just want to, people to have a good time, we try and keep the cost down as, as, as low as we can, um, and, um, yeah, just, we have our gunsmith here as well, so if they've got a gun here, we, we can, as long as it's a simple repair or a um, quick check over, we can do that on site so yeah it, it's just a it's a great way of interacting with you know our, our shooters and showing them you know if we've got a new gun we can show them a few of those as well i mean even today being you know in effect a guest day i know the actual com competition kicks off proper i think on friday and runs for three days um even today uh, there's a cross section of people there's clearly people that shoot really well uh, people that don't shoot much at all and everything in between um would it be fair to say for anybody watching that uh, it is open to all levels of shooting? Obviously, it's based around the Beretta brand, of course. Yeah. But uh, I get the impression that um, you know novices would feel very comfortable here. Yeah, we, we try and you know just try and beat, try and ask the course designer to beat people by by clever targets rather than by yeah. distance. Really. So yes, I think most people as you saw today, there's a lot of relatively new shooters here mm. who, who and you know we have this sort of the you know, sponsors day is what it really is but we also yeah. use it as a way of checking that the scores are you know it's not too too challenging and you know i get to shoot it myself as well so you know um there are else <laughs> <laughs> okay i won't no. um based on uh, the layout you've got for this year's competition um high gun 120 being the full bag. What's your prediction? Just for fun. 
Yeah, I, 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 I'm constantly amazed at how well people shoot mm. these days, you know, mm. and a top shoot on his, on his day, you know. I would be surprised if it's more than 116 or something like that, okay. but, you know, because there are no ridiculous targets out there, are there? But there's, no. a, there's a consistent level of stance where it's very easy to miss a target. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it, I personally, I think it's really well thought out. I think it's more sort of technical rather than, you know, necessarily big or fast. You could almost be tricked into thinking it's easier than what it is. So I think it's a real thinking man or woman's yeah. um, shoot indeed. Um, but that's interesting. So, so, so your guess maybe or just stab would be, you know, you think a 115, 116 would be... That's usually where it's at. I mean, last yeah. year I think it, it, um, it was a 118, which was just a crazy score. But, um, you know, that, as I say, some of those top guys, you know, on their day, can just shoot out the yeah. scores, can't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the lovely thing is, I think, you know, for the, for the hardened shooter, there's everything here to test. I think for the more, you know, relaxed general shooter, um, it's a sum of its parts. It, it, it's great location, you know, l lovely catering, um, lovely team. I mean, the, you know, it is true, some of its parts is beautifully put together. Um, does this reflect at all, do you think, on the Beretta brand in the sense of, you know, Beretta's always up there as one of the top brands in line with, with other top brands. What is it that keeps Beretta at that level, or indeed in your mind maybe, you know, stood out as the best brand? Yeah, I, th I think it's um, it's, a, it's a strong brand, as you say, and, and, but it's the, the brand is, is a fact, is a product of the you know, reliability, the innovation, the consistency of performance, you know, and, and you know, yeah, every gun have, has its problems from time to time. Mm. You know, they are producing big volumes, so. But no, Beretta invests massively in new machinery, and they you know, I think having the Olympic shooters sponsorship program as well that, yeah. that they're getting some very um, high level feedback there um, to, to those guys that are looking to you know, score an extra target uh, um, you know to uh, any through through any way they can mm. and the gun is obviously critical to that mm. so yeah I mean you, you're going through the Beretta range as well you've got you know the, you've got the basic 680 action and then the 694 is a it's very similar but there's a couple of tweaks on that and then you you know go to the DT11 platform as yeah. well, which is a completely different gun and has a very different feel. And mm. you know, we've got the um, the SL2, which has sort of been out in its launch version. Um, the, the, um, but and we're hoping to get the uh, the, the, the full, uh, more production version of that, which you know, will not be a cheap gun either. But it's um, and then again, I don't know if you saw it, but it's it's got a very different rear profile. Yes. And yes, um, and are people are you getting positive feedback for that? Is that being, you know, what, what, what the people? We got we got less than ten of them in the UK, so mm. it's um, and, and it was a, you know, a, a twenty thousand pound plus gun. So, you know, in, in truth, it's we've not had a lot of feedback, but we we um, we're just waiting for the full production version, really, which mm. um, which just will be fantastic I'm sure well for me I think it, it, it's going to be a big challenge because I you know I am uh, this is <laughs> not preset up you know I am a fan of the brand and uh, I know you've got many you know beautiful items within that range and actually probably not music to your ears but as I said earlier you know there's some, some older guns which are still equally as, as cracking and still as reliable as the day they were made um, but Carl look I mean I, I think that brings it to an end I think really the idea is for people to come you know to the Beretta Worlds um, you know, and come and try it. Come and get involved. Come and try it out. Um, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, we've all had a wonderful day today, and uh, I hope it's a huge success this year. I'm sure it will be, and uh, carries on for a lot longer. Thank you for coming as well, and thank you to the Field Sports Press as well and Glacier TV for their support of the event, which yeah. is really valued and, and helpful. Well, I think that's set. So uh, thank you. Brilliant. Thank Cheers. you. All the best.